Hello. So I'm back with uh, Act 2, Scene 1. And I thought I would uh, share with you a few of the mocking puns and quibbling word plays that uh, we have done from uh, lines 1 to 186. It's very important to understand the art of Shakespeare and also the kind of uh, the word plays do, do depict a lot about the characters. Yes. So before I move forward to the next few lines, you see from line 17 to 20 when Gonzalo says when every grief is entertained that's offered comes to the entertainer. Now here of course he means the person who suffers the pain. But you know when, uh, when it is removed from the context, uh, what happens? What does Sebastian do? He uses the word entertainer, uh, entertainer to be a performer, somebody who performs. And so as a response to that he says well um, you will get a fee for that, a dollar for that. So that is the connection between why you wonder why does he bring in a dollar. Now dollar again has a double meaning. So dollar, Sebastian uses it as a kind of fee for the kind uh, with, for the entertainment that Gonzalo is providing. While Gonzalo keeps to his line of thought and talking about grief because dollar also means grief or sadness. So you see the same word how brilliantly Shakespeare has brought in two different layers of meaning, but serves the purpose and this is quibbling, wordplay, right? <coughs> and also the punning on the word dollar. Now if you look at lines 42 to 43, Adrian refers to the island as become very mild and delicate and delicate temperance and immediately Antonio deliberately misinterprets temperance and calling it, oh, it's a beautiful girl, what a beautiful girl she is in the wench so again you know it's trying to uh, trying to sort of um, put area uh, adriel in his place because adrian is of course just an ordinary lord and not like antonio the duke of milan so put him in place and he says well um, uh, temperance just making fun of it so you know this entire thing whenever they try to make uh, fun and they try to quibble with words. Uh, think of the circumstances. They are shipwrecked and they are on the island. And here are these two who sort of Sebastian and Tori who's just trying to uh, make small every little thing that the others are talking about. Yes. Now if you move to line 70 to 81. Uh, Gonzalo to exemplify the beauty of Claribel. You know like um, she, she, he's talking of the beauty of Claribel. Uh, compares her to Dido of Carthage, yes, you know, and by way of uh, rhyme, he says, Vido, Dido, and then Antonio and Sebastian starts playing with the with the rhyme scheme, Vido, Dido, Dido, Vido, and uh, she's called a widow because there's this story that she was forsaken by Aeneas, and uh, so she remained um, heartbroken all her life, uh, and then, you know, to this, Adrian says, but why are you talking about Carthage, how... Um, it, it, it's different from Tunis and then Gonzalo says no Carthage is modern Tunis but you see Antonio disagrees you know in his in his no all attitude supercilious attitude he says just like you know just like um, Amphion who played the uh, music uh, it's believed he played music so brilliantly that he fortified the walls of Thebes um, the land of Thebes he says that okay uh, Gonzalo with his lies is creating a new city, false city, like when he says Carthage is like Tunis, because it's very clear that Antonio's knowledge about geography is poor. No comparison to Gonzalo. The Carthage is modern Tunis. Yes, just to be, just for clarification, yes. So again, it throws a light on the character of Antonio and Sebastian to a great extent. Then again, lines 95 to 97, you have... Uh, is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a sort. I, you know, like when you say casually, you know, in some sense, doesn't it look as fresh? Uh, you know, like in some sense, that's the way he uses. But Antonio, what does he say? He's only looking at the word sort. Uh, that, and deliberately misinterprets that. Yes, and you, you know, starts jesting with Sir Sebastian, quibbling with the word um, and said, oh, so sort, so you put it deliberately at the end, so you're fishing. You know, like, for no rhyme or reason, he plays about with words. And this actually goes back to uh, 
um, in line 39 when you know when adrian says uh, in context of whether in line 39 in context of um, when he says that uh, um, when they when when they are actually talking about uh, the the condition of uh, the condition of uh, sorry i just sort of the lines the papers of thrown out yes when when he's talking about the condition of uh, their their status on their return back return uh, uh, from tunis and in line 39 here he says that um, though this island seemed deserted uh, uninhabit uninhabitable and almost inaccessible sebastian says yet adrian says yet yet you know that yet is he's talking of the positive part of it though it looks very alien it looks very inaccessible yet uh, very positive yes uh, he's he's hopeful about it but in line 40 you will find antonio says he could not miss it so you know like they they could not miss it so for him for antonio and sebastian who are who are made of a different metal yes we get while they they lack hope they lack optimism so for them yet uh, yet what are you, what are you talking about yes he didn't, didn't miss a chance to repeat what i have said so they are just like i said they are just quibbling with words and for no uh, particular gain it just throws light on their character okay i do have a quibble later on but uh, that i will come to it when we discuss the um, um, the that section of it because now we we are moving to uh, before we move on to the next few lines after 186 uh, just to let you know if you have your text with you i hope you have you know this um, uh, alonzo's lines here when he says that uh, you cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense that you're making me think about clarible and how i have lost both my son and daughter these lines are important for reference to the context so please mark out these lines yes it's about about 100 after gonzalo says when i wrote it at your daughter's wedding i'm still with the, the first part of the yes and then francisco who brings in hope when he says sir he may live i saw him beat the surges under him which i have already referred to but it's important that you tick these lines for reference to the context yes and the next is uh, the next set of course is uh, uh, when we talk about the commonwealth and gonzalo talks about the commonwealth so this uh, these lines uh, commonwealth lines are uh, from uh, lines 148 onwards to lines if you follow the text it is about lines 165 yes so the entire uh, which i have already Uh, discuss with you about the commonwealth through the um, uh, board work um, in the commonwealth uh, i would be con- contrary to execute all things for no kind of traffic would i admit so these very lines are extremely important now what happens after this let's come to um, what happens after this entire thing about um, sleep uh, about uh, the commonwealth is done uh, yes uh, he says that uh, gonzalo says you are gentlemen of brave metal you would lift the moon out of her sphere if she would continue in it five weeks without changing he said that see i mean he 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 can see the way they they are uh, uh, quibbling with words and deliberately trying to miss uh, represent what gonzalo is saying he said well then he accepts that you you all are brave men you all you all are sort of so intelligent and so brave and so powerful that you know the the cycle of the moon uh, uh, changes every time you know with that you know we have the full moon then it starts uh, waning and then we move to a no moon night yes and then again it starts waxing and we go back to full moon so he said that if the moon doesn't change you all have the power to uh, power to change the position of the moon uh, lift it out of his spheres if it didn't change yes so we don't know perhaps gonzalo here is very being tongue in cheek yeah deliberately being sarcastic to show them that well 
you can do the impossible yeah, knowing that nobody can do it yes then what's important is you must note Ariel playing solemn music Ariel comes in playing the music and what happens as a result of that yes uh, there's a reference to bat fouling which is which is a kind of a sport that they they would indulge in uh, during those during those times and uh, and uh, you know like uh, the very cruel method of catching bats by hitting it with a pole so and then Ariel plays his music and puts everyone to sleep except Sebastian and Antonio. Now, remember, every time that Ariel comes and plays his magic, you know that this is the next step uh, in Prospero's plan of action. Right? Now, what is he planning here? What is the intention in uh, putting Sebastian and Antonio to sleep in this section, this entire section? Um, uh, that is from lines, uh, it'll be lines 188 in your text, uh, right right up to um, the end of it uh, before um, they are woken up and that is about line 325. This entire section is, if I talk about the theme, it is the final revelation of um, that extremely dishonest, and dishonest nature of Sebastian and Antonio. We already know about Antonio. We already know how you usurped his brother's kingdom and threw them out for a mere sum of money. He, he gave up his, the sovereignty of Milan to Duke of Naples. In this scene, this aspect of Sebastian and Antonio's dishonesty and his, their vile nature is cemented, if I may say so, right? So, very, very interesting section. Now, Gonzalo, no, I warrant you, I will not adventure my discretion. Will you laugh me asleep? I'm very heavy. So, the, he's falling asleep. Go sleep and hear us. What? All so soon asleep? You know, immediately when you know, how did they suddenly fall asleep? So, we know how. It's magic, right? Otherwise, people can't just fall asleep, yes? I wish mine eyes would be with themselves. Shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. So, now it's important here because Alonso is uh, is suffering, right? He is suffering. He is pained by the loss of his daughter as well as his son. So he says that I wish uh, mine eyes would be themselves shut up my thoughts. I wish even I could sleep because then I would be thinking about my losses, yes? Then, then he realizes, I think I'm falling asleep. So Sebastian says that please take advantage of it, fall asleep. Because sel sleep seldom visits sorrow. You know, it's a very, it's a universal truth that if your mind is disturbed, you cannot sleep. If you are too tense, if there's a lot to worry, sleep is difficult. So he said, if it has come to you, don't fight it. Go off to sleep. Because it's going to give you a lot of comfort. So, and Antonio says, we are going to keep guard. Yeah, we are, we are going to keep guard and watch over your safety. Go off to sleep. Sebastian, what a strange drowsiness possessed them. This is, you know, he feels this is a very kind of strange sleep that has suddenly come upon them. Uh, suddenly they were talking and then all of a sudden they fall asleep. So Antonio again justifying, well, I think it's the air of the island, quality of the climate, the air of the island. Then, then Sebastian says, then why, why are we not falling asleep? Why? And Antonio said, yes, we are quite feeling quite brisk. Uh, and they said they fell together all as if by consent. They dropped as by thunderstroke. It was as if, you know, like somebody said, go off to sleep, you know, like a magic. And, and they had actually hit the nail on their head. It was magic. They did fall asleep because of what Ariel did. What might were the Sebastian? What do you think happened? Or what might? Or what do you think? can happen now. So you see, Antonio's evil mind has already started working. Yes. No more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face, what thou shouldest be. The occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. The very onset, very important lines. Immediately, what does he do? He puts the thought in Sebastian's head. He said, yeah, what happened that they put them to sleep? And what might happen because they are asleep? Yeah. 
very very uh, crucial these lines are and he says well i think i can see it on your face yes i can see what might happen i can see the crown of naples coming and resting on your head so what is the thought that he has put in sebastian's mind you can be the king of naples you can take advantage of the sleep that has now come to your brother so what does sebastian said what are the waking i mean are you in your senses what are you talking about yes well i don't know can't you understand what i am saying so you see of the two who did the evil thoughts come first you know antonio as you served his brother prospero you know here it's again antonio who brings about the first thought of um, ousting his uh, sebastian's brother that is king of naples and sebastian getting the crown so antonio of the two is perhaps more dishonest yes i do and surely it is a sleepy language and thou speakest out of thy sleep what is it that was said it is you know sebastian is not ready to sort of understand it or maybe he's not he's understood it but not really sure about what he said because perhaps this thought has never entered his mind we give him give him uh, sort of um, that much of leeway perhaps this thought has never occurred to him but he says that i, I mean this is strange repose he says strange kind i feel to be asleep with eyes wide open standing speaking moving and yet so fast it seems again quibbling on words yes uh, this is a strange repose you know i'm resting i feel i'm asleep there are no thoughts but my eyes are awake i'm you're speaking to me i can hear words but i don't understand the words so perhaps i'm sleeping or but i'm awake so you see indirectly sebastian what is sebastian trying to say that i uh, i've got the gist of it but i'm not very clear as to what you are saying yes noble sebastian thou let us fortune sleep die rather wink while thou you are you are awake yes but if you do not understand if you are not aware of your surroundings you are putting your fortunes to sleep why does he say that and what does sebastian very interesting line well i am standing water i am water which is stagnant which does not flow i i am put in one place i stay there So Antonio says, "Well, I'll teach you how to flow. I'll give you movement. Yes, do so to ebb. Hereditary sloth instructs me. I'm born to ebb, to go back. Why? Because I'm second born. So a second born cannot have ambition. A second born cannot desire for more. So hereditary sloth instructs me because of my accident of my birth. I'm not first born. The first born becomes the king." i'm second born so by hereditary i am lazy i don't have aspirations i don't have ambitions right so if you if you were new how you purpose cherish while thou you mock it how in stripping it you are more invested having men indeed more often do so near the bottom run by their own fear of sloth he said if you knew how you purpose cherish while thou mock it you are making fun of it but if you really knew how you could achieve it yes if you really knew at this point in time how you could use that what the opportune moment has given to you you would know what you are capable of because people who who do not have ambition who are like stagnant who water flows backwards uh, and they do so why because of their own laziness or their own fear or of their own acceptance that they are weak not not the circumstances their own acceptance yes now sebastian says uh, birth indeed which throws thee much to yield i mean i can understand what you are saying but by birth how is it possible i am second born not possible thus sir although this lord of weak remembrance this who shall be of a little memory when he is earth earth hath here almost persuaded for is a spirit of persuasion only profess to pursue the king his sons alive it's as impossible that he's undrowned as he that sleeps here swims i have no hope that he's undrowned so let me explain to you the circumstances he says i'm taking you back to all the events that have happened the king here is asleep right 
what what is who, who is the next in heir ferdinand now do you have any hope that ferdinand is alive so sebastian says no i have no hope well out of that hope what great hope have you if you are sure that ferdinand is not alive if you are hopeful that ferdinand is not alive it's hope for you as well what hope if the king who sleep now and we assume that sleep is forever ferdinand his son who is the next heir is drowned there is hope for you who is next in line claribel the daughter is too far away and i don't think she is going to come so who is next in line you your brother uh, no hope that way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond but doubt discovery there very very strong words you know actually in the here probably the li line is wrong the lines are wrong but here in 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 your text it is uh, these are lines out of that hope uh, these will be lines 2 about lines 256 57 yes um so what 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 does uh, what does antonio say here he says that uh, to have a hope that uh, Ferdinand is not alive. Is the maximum hope for you? Yes, uh, that uh, you're about your own fate. That uh, now you can start becoming ambitious. Now you can cherish the thought of something that you probably have never thought about before. Earlier, it didn't appear possible. Now, those thoughts are possible. Yes. because you are accepting that ferdinand is drowned so you can think about some kind of ambition who is the next in heir claribel yeah and she is the queen of tunis so do you think she is going to come back she is she she lived 10 leagues beyond man's life so it's it's like a journey for a lifetime to come back she is not going to take over the uh, reins of naples it's not possible yes uh, the man in the moon too slow i mean a man in the moon too slow you know you have this poem the mountain man the appear the man with the lantern dog and a bush in it's a nursery rhyme so it's what what is meaning to say is it it's too difficult a journey so claribel is never going to never going to come yes it is not possible that uh, she is going to come and uh, lifetime's journey yes and um, uh, so he says that uh, till new born chins be rough and reasonable you know he says that it's going to take a long time the gist of it is it's going to be an unending journey yes um, so it's a, so assume that she is never going to be the heir she that from whom we all were see swallowed though some cast again some cast again some of us are saved some of us and by that destiny to perform an act where of what what is past is prologue very very important lines this very important lines and because some of us have been saved and some of us is important not ferdinand some of us have been saved so where of what is past is prologue so what has happened in the past is the beginning to the new story what has happened in the past claribel's wedding she's in tunis the ship shipwreck ferdinand is we are hope hopeful that he's drowned the king is asleep we are saved this what has happened is the beginning of the new story what to come in yours and my discharge so what is going to happen now in the next few minutes is what you have to decide at this point in time so that is i think a lot that we have done for today i i really don't want to go through this i want you to understand this we will move into of course uh, no let me finish it is a bit left yeah so what does he say then now he's put the real thought into into sebastian's head right uh, so what does he say uh past is prolonged and I, i seem to have lost the lines here yes all right 
Sebastian, what stuff is this? How say you? I mean, what are you talking about? Now he's getting to understand it. I said, what are you talking about? It's true my brother's daughter is in Tunis, so she's there, betwixt which region there is some space. A space whose every cube seems to cry, how shall that clarible measure us back to Naples? It's a space that is very clear that how can she ever come back? She's going to stay there and let Sebastian wake. It's time for Sebastian to get up and realize his dreams. Say this were death that now had seized them. Assume that they are dead. Assume Ferdinand is dead. Assume Clarivel is dead. The king is asleep. Sleep is synonymous to death. Why? They were no worse than they are now. Now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. You have the same capacity to rule Naples as the one who is now fast asleep. So you have the same determination, you have the same courage, you have the same qualities. Why can't you be the king of Naples? Lords that can pray as amply and unnecessary as is Gonzalo, I myself could make as chaff as a deep chat. The only person who might cause uh, problems for us, who's going to talk and raise questions is Gonzalo. And he says that, well, I can, I can, I can put, put, quieten him down as well. Yes, um, I can train him. I can train him to, to speak. Yes, because he's, uh, like he says, uh, uh, he's, uh, chaff here is referred to a crow. So you make a jackass talk the language that you want to speak. So probably I can do that. And if we can't, then maybe we'll put him to sleep as well. Or that you bore the mind that I do. What a sleep was this for your advancement. Do you understand? Oh, I wish you were thinking like I'm thinking. This sleep is of enormous possibilities for you. Have you understood? Sebastian, he thinks I do. And how does your content tender your good fortune? And do you... How does your content tender your good fortune? Yes. So how are you satisfied with what fortune is lay, lay, has laid out for you? Yes. I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me and see how well I am I am now affluent as a Duke of Milan. Probably better than what my brother used to do because he used to be busy with books. But I run my own country the way I want to. But for your conscience. This question tells us that perhaps Sebastian has a bit more of conscience than Antonio. Antonio is wild throughout. What about conscience? Doesn't it trick you? Doesn't it bother you? I surveillize that. What are you talking about? If it were Kaiv, I'd put it to my slipper, but I feel not that deity in my bosom. He is absolutely crass. He said, what is conscience? He says, that, well, I, I, is it like a, a sore? It's like a little blob that grows on the body. So I'll put it under the heel of my shoe. Yes. That, you know, when you, when you, when you get a blister, so he said, is the conscience like the blister? I don't feel it. You put, a, you put a plaster on your blister and you wear your new shoes again. So probably it's the same kind of blister. I don't feel it. Twenty consciousness that stand between me and Milan. Candid be they and melt ere they molest. So you see, Antonio is beyond redemption, yes? So he says that, yeah, I'm, um, uh, so he says that even no matter 20 consciousness, no matter how much people say, no matter what is being spoken about, I do not, uh, they might be open, they might be clear in their thoughts, but it doesn't bother me because I know what I've done and they don't harm me, they don't molest here is, of course, it, it causes discomfort. It doesn't cause me any discomfort. So he's just brushing it away. So here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies. He's like the earth. Yes. Dead to the world. Yes. Whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it can lay to bed forever. I can kill it, three inches of the sword. And what will you do? You should kill Gonzalo. Though he says that I can change Gonzalo's mind, but he says to be better off. So that no questions are asked, you put this uh, prudence, that is, you know, somebody who's right here, somebody who's correct, somebody who's, who believes in the sanctity of things, you can, you can use your sword on Gonzalo. I will do the same for Alonso and uh, everything will be done. They'll take suggestion as a cat laughs week and the rest of the lords, we'll just explain that they were demons of the forest that came and killed them, yes, and they will follow us. 
thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent. What you have done to your brother is the story that I'm going to follow. So your case is my precedent. I follow what you have done. You have ousted your brother to become the Duke of Milan. I'll oust my brother to become the King of Naples. Right? As thou goddess Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest. So I'm absolving you. You kill him. You don't have to pay me a tribute anymore. And I shall king shall love thee. So we'll be friends forever. Draw together. And when I rear my head, do you like? And they're going to fall. But one word, they talk, discussing something. Ariel comes back with his music. You know. Now you know what the ploy of Prospero was. To show that absolute vile character of these two. To show another conspiracy that Antonio has now hatched along with Sebastian. Another controversy. To oust another brother. Right. Understood? Clear? That's for today. Till I meet you next time. Bye.